Hello friends, welcome. Friends, today I am going to talk about a very important topic. Now this topic you might have already heard and already many of you who are watching this video might already know. This is about the US inflation and the US Fed policy rates. As an investor or as a market analysis who is seriously looking at the Indian market and trying to basically unlock value, they closely follow the US interest rates. Why? Because the flow of US dollars into and outside the country is dependent closely on the interest rates that the bond yield is giving in US. If the bond yields are high, then the dollar will tend to flow back in US. If the bond yields are low, then the dollar is going to flow out of US into markets like India and other developing economies. So when the market, when the fund flows into our country, then the stock market booms and the stock market, basically the valuation of stock market sustains over a long period of time because a large part of our stock market, AUC, is driven by the foreign exchange flow in the country, the FPI investment with the foreign investors making in our stock market. But you may say that anyway the stock market valuation in India is very high. So why are you even interested in this topic? The reason we are interested in this topic is that there are various other factors which impact the larger, uh, you know, the overall economic situation of the world is largely impacted by inflation, the bond rates and the policy rates of US. So today what I've done is that I have taken a lot of pain to draw one single dashboard. Now this dashboard which you see in front of your screen is capturing the information of the CPI inflation, the policy rate and the bond yields of various durations starting from year 2024 and till 2028 on a quarter level. Now capturing this information in single dashboard gives us a bird's eye view what happened in 2008 and what hap what is happening now in 2024 and why the Fed is not reducing rates. It's very clearly visible from this chart and how different the current situation is compared to what we have seen in past in US. So how, it, how you can basically tell the story because if you look at this uh, chart, this chart actually has, as I told you, that there is a time series on the y-axis, which is uh, year and quarters. And then we have the CPI inflation in the US, the combined inflation in US, which is in this particular column. And then the violet uh, is the policy, the, the column which is marked with, with violet policy rates is in this column. And then we have the bond yields of various duration, six months, one year, two year, three year, five year, seven year, 10 year, 20 year and 30 year. Now, the color of this uh, dashboard is determined by the how much, what is the value of a particular interest rate in a cell. Higher the value, more red it is going to become. If it is lower, then it will become green, right? So you will notice is that let's start from the bottom. In 2008, when there was a crisis, at that time, the inflation in US was pretty low. Policy rates were also low. However, the expected inflation, which is driven by the, the, uh, the bond yields of 20 year and 30 year, because long term bonds are basically driving expected inflation. So which is a 10 year bond yield was 3.25%. 20 year bond yield was 3.97%. And the 30 year bond yield was 3.68%. So which basically clearly shows that though the short term interest rates, which are driven by the policy rates, were low, but the long term, the market was expecting a higher inflation in future. And it kind of translated into higher inflation. Uh, as you see that in year 2011, we actually saw higher inflation and the policy rates were still kept low, right? Uh, because you see the policy rates were low, but the inflation was higher and somehow it was managed and the inflation was brought down without changing the policy rate, right? So it's clearly seen that the policy rates were 0.25, 0.25, inflation was higher, though the expected inflation was higher during the time of year 2000, between 2011 to 2008, slowly, slowly, the whole thing basically went, it was managed, so without any difficulty. So things become much more easier as we move forward. Now in 2012, the inflation basically fluctuated between 1.889 to 1 1.9 and you will find the expected inflation basically went down 
uh, the 10-year inflations were, were under control. And then as we move in 2014, we saw a lower interest rates, uh, the lower CPI rate, as well as, you know, the 10, at least the 10-year in, in, uh, bond yields were under control. Though there was slightly, slight, the, the higher 20-year and 30-year bond yields basically were at a higher level of above 3%, but 10-year was under control. Then in 2015, uh, the um, the CPI inflation actually was very very low. The policy rates were also held very low, and then the situation stabilized. And then in 2018, just before the COVID, actually in 2019, uh, uh, actually the COVID hit us in year 2020. So you find that year 2017, 18, 18 and 19, at least in 18, the CPI inflation rose. And, and the expected inflation also rose accordingly. But in 2019, the CPI inflation and the bond yields and the policy rates were kind of in alignment. 20, what happened? The CPI inflation was low. The policy rates were still lower because you see the policy rates were pulled down further, right? In, in two, because it was still held higher and it was pulled down at 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And therefore, what happened was that the the interest rates of the um, the low duration bonds were pulled down further and the, there was an impact, a spillover impact of the higher duration bond yields also. Then what happened in 2021, the inflation shot up exponentially. You see, the, in 2003rd quarter, 4.8%, 5.26%, 6.75% and then suddenly, you know, it, now, and then what happened? The policy rates were still kept low. It was not. It, it, it did not rise with the, with the inflation. But in order to contain the inflation, the policy rates were increased, and that drove the inflation down. So see now, see the inflation is going down 4.04 percent, 3.56 percent, 3.24 percent, 3.25 percent now. But the policy rate is still very held very high. Why? Because you see everything red here. Can you see that the don't we should not worry about the bonds of the lower duration because those are driven by the policy rates, but look at the bonds of the high high, high duration, 10 year, 20 year, and 30 year. Though the bond yields have gone slightly low compared to what it was in the fourth quarter of 2023, but still it is very very high. Can you see? From 4.44 percent, because into in in the third quarter the 10-year bond yield was 10.14 percent on an average on the quarter level, and then it went up to 4.44 percent. Now it is it's 4.16 percent. So what I think is going on is that this situation is completely different. If you see that everything is red here in 2020, 24, 23 compared to what we saw down below. So this is unprecedented situation. You know, everything red, CPI inflation high, policy rate high, all the bond deals are high. And that is why uh, the Fed is not reducing the, the policy rates. And it will take a while before the policy rates are going to come down. The reason is that these all have to become green. As soon as the expected inflation in US becomes green, which is with direct correlation with the, uh, the high um, duration bond rates, then the policy rates will go down. Now, we are unsure as to what will be the time frame till which this policy rates can be driven down to a level so that it becomes green. At least it should be brought down to a level of 1.5%, 1, 1.9% 1 before at least a 10-year bond yield so that you know they, they can start pulling down the, the, uh, the, inter, the policy rates. Uh, so inflation is still high. Inflation has to go down further down. How, how down it is going to go down, I, I am not too sure. But it is clear that the expected inflation, which is a very significant part of uh, the Fed's policy management, is still held very high because of the bond yields of higher duration is showing higher yield. So those have to be brought down. Then only the policy rates are going to go down. Right? So I, I hope that that is why I thought that when I was aggregating this data, because there a lot of processing was required, but this data actually gives a bird's eye view as to what is happening in US. So I'm going to do some follow up work. Maybe I'll write an article on the gold issue, the central bank gold issue and the treasury bonds of US. What is happening with the treasury bond? There are a lot of, you know, misconception about gold. So what I'm planning to do, I'm planning to do a, write an article on gold. 
and then I'll do a follow-up video on gold to explain as to why the gold prices are held very high and why there is the in a current situation the stock market the gold prices the bitcoin everything is held very high and why there is a there is a in a strong correlation between all these numbers what it is telling us from a macroeconomic point of view as far as the world economy is concerned so that is the next uh, you know um, article that i'm planning to do and maybe i'll follow it up with a video so so friends i hope that you found this video very useful though the information is not new but I thought that presenting this information in this manner adds a lot of value because you can see the bigger picture and then you can make some prediction as to how long the bond rates, uh, the interest rates in US are going to be held high and when is the chances that the inter interest rate will start falling with some kind of implication on the other parts of the world which are highly dependent upon flow of US dollars from US and in and investment into other developing and developed countries. Thank you very much friends for this for your time watching this video and I will come back with a new video next time. Thank you very much.